Just recently, I started working on a new G17 build, so that opened up a need for me to find a new weapon light. Uh, I currently have Surefire X300Us and Ts, uh, Streamlight, uh, TLR1 HL, uh, Mod Light PL350, and even still have an old light Balder Red from my early days of getting into weapon lights. Um, you know, I wanted to try something out a little bit different. Um, I hadn't even thought of the Hollow Sun when I first started looking around. Um, honestly, I was looking to get like a stream light. I didn't want to spend a ton of money on this light in particular. It seems like right now the uh, TLR One HL is going for about one hundred thirty-five to one hundred forty-five dollars. Um, and then it kind of popped in my mind the the Hollow Sun. So um, you know, I took the X three hundred U off my Gen three G nineteen ish build which has a hollow sun 508t for a red dot on it so i thought all right you know what i'll move that x300 over to my g17 build and let me go ahead and give this new hollow sun pid a shot so the hollow sun weapon lights that were introduced last year in 2022 um, there's four different models that are available uh, the model that i'm particularly going over today is the pid just the standard model um, has 1000 lumens and 23,000 candela uh, it does also offer a low mode where it'll be 500 lumens, but they do not give a candela rating. So um, just very briefly, anybody who's not already already aware, um, candela is king, not lumen. It's what really matters. Uh, just to kind of give you a comparison uh, in how lumens and candela are different. Well, lumens is the total amount of available light. And candela is the intensity and how far that light can be thrown or those lumens can be thrown. So uh, I often like to compare it to like a water hose. So if you take your garden hose and attach it to your spigot outside um, with no attachments on the end of it and you turn on the faucet full blast, it's just going to kind of come out of the end. So think of that, that water flow like lumens. Um, you know, it doesn't go very far. Far, It just kind of comes out the end of it and, and squirts out the end of the hose, maybe three inches, and then just, you know, splatters on the floor. Um, if you take a, uh, a hose end adapter on the end of it, so whether it be a sprayer or maybe for better purposes of this comparison, um, just a, a single spout, you, you put that on there and that same water pressure that's coming out of the end of it can now be squirted a lot farther. Now, granted, it won't come out as in mass or at one time like it will without a, a uh, hose end attachment on it, but you'll be able to take that same PSI of water coming out of your house and your spigot, and you will now be able to shoot that water farther with more intensity. So that's kind of a, 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 a comparison or a metaphor for um, lumen and candela. So over the last couple of years, it really has become more evident that candela is what is more important, more so than lumen. Um, and, you know, one of the, the workhorse weapon lights that a lot of people go for is the Surefire X300U. Uh, it's been out for quite a few years, has a, a 1,000 lumens. But while it does have 1,000 lumens, uh, it only has 11,300 candela, which is really, really low. Um, it has a very broad, it's a very floody light. There's not a super concentrated hot spot. It throws a, a wide range of light, available light, um, which is super good for working indoors. Um, but what it's not good for is throwing that light very far distance and also breaking through what's called photonic barriers. And that could be um, ambient light, light being shined back on you, smoke, fog, uh, stuff like that. So for the Holosun PID to have a candela rating of 23,000, that's, that's pretty impressive. That is a lot more than what Surefire has. Um, along with the Holosun PID, the basic model, uh, this is the most inexpensive model. Uh, MSRP is for $135. Um, it uses a 18350 battery, um, which is a rechargeable battery. Uh, currently, the only other weapon light in the market, or at least in the popular ones, is the Mod Light PL350. Uh, when you get the light, it comes in this box, which is very, very similar to the Holosun Optic box. Which it's pretty much the same thing. So if you're familiar with Holosun Optics, uh, you are going to be very familiar with uh, the box that it comes in. So the the PID obviously comes with a uh, instruction manual. Uh, it does come with a 18350 battery, which is very nice. 
Um, it is a 1400 MAH capacity. Uh, so whenever you see the MAH numbers, that's how much juice that it can basically hold. Uh, I, I did notice that this, uh, the light, their battery coming with it being 1400 MAH, where in comparison to other batteries, 18350s that I have, whether it be Orbtronics, um, and I can't remember the other brand, but they're about 1200 MAH. So the, the battery that comes with the PID um, is, is a little bit larger uh, than what is typically on the market today um, along with that it does also come with a charger cord um, this light while it is front loading which meaning that the battery comes off comes out of the front of the light and does not require you to have a um, remove the light to charge the battery up you also do have the option of charging it uh, via magnet um, sorry, drop the light there uh, via magnet attachment right down here uh, comes with the cord. You're gonna plug it into a USB type adapter like your cell phone has. Click it here. It'll stick to it and it'll help charge it up. Um, I, I probably won't ever use it in that function. I'll just change out the one eight three fifty batteries. But the option is there. Uh, also comes with three different rail keys, um, which are different distances. You know, for depending on the gun that you have, you got a one, two, and a three. Um, you go through the manual. It tells you the different um, distances that it, it, it positions the light. Um, while I think that Hollow Sun would consider um, the PID to be a full-size light, uh, it is not quite as large as some of the other offerings out there. Um, in comparison, you know, you take the uh, Streamlight TLR1HL, which is just very, very slightly larger um, than the Hollow Sun PID. Uh, the X300 UNT, which are both exactly the same size, is a little bit longer. Um, and then like, you have the Mod Light PL350, which is the largest of the whole group. So you kind of see in comparison there, um, size-wise between between these three different lights. And just for fun, I'll go ahead and throw in the Olight Balder Red. Um, so there you go. So um, it, it's kind of like a mid-size light. It definitely not as small as a TLR7. Um, or other smaller options that are available out there, uh, but gives you impressive uh, light performance. You know, you know, 1,000 lumen along with the 23,000 uh, candela. That's that's some pretty impressive numbers. Um, <clears throat> also, having the ability to go into a high power or low power mode. I mean, that's a plus two. Uh, I I couldn't find any real reviews or reading out there that covered how it goes from high to low so i was concerned when i got it how that was going to work you know if you have something like a, some of the streamlight rail mount lights um or some of the handhelds or even if you look at the cloud defensive mch uh dual mode light um you know you click the button once for low click the buttons uh, once for for or twice for high um so I was curious how this is work uh, this was going to work out and basically how that works is as you see you have padivation uh paddle activation switches on the side here uh, which is very intuitive um, in comparison to some other lights where they toggle on and off um, you know the surefire you press forward for momentary and toggle it for high and low and then you know the same thing goes for the streamlight hl that's strictly a toggle uh, whereas in the Olight uh, model has uh, paddles as well. So I know a lot of the a lot of people rave about the Streamlight TLR7 due to the paddle design. So it's ambidextrous. So whether you're left-handed or right-handed, um, it, it does the same thing. So um, it's it that that you know if you prefer that activation method, uh, the Hollow Sun PID has that. So I did get sidetracked a little bit. Um, going back to the Hollow Sun in particular, uh, their Weapon Light series that they came out with, this this PID, which is their standard version, and also their least expensive version, um, but they do also have a PID Plus. And the PID Plus is very similar to the PID, but it also adds a green laser. Um, so that being said, the, the, um, the, the lumens and candela ratings also change. There is still a high-low mode, but instead of being 1,000 um, on the standard PID, it drops down to 900 lumens. Uh, in low mode, it's 450. 
Uh, candela wise, you still have 20,000 20, candela in the high mode. And for whatever reason, they do not list a candela rating for the low mode on the standard PID. But they do in the PID plus and that's 10,000. So high mode, 900 lumens, 20,000 candela. Low mode, 450 uh, lumens, 10,000 candela. Also having the green laser and MSRP goes up to $199. Uh, next model up would be the PID HC or High Candela. So this is a light only, uh, but it has uh, pretty substantially more candela. Uh, lumens drops, uh, but like I said, it's not that's not as important as candela. Um, in high mode, you get 800 lumens and 42,000 candela. So that's very very impressive. Um, and then in low mode, you get 400 lumens and 21,000 candela. Still impressive. Um, MSRP is 199 and then lastly they have the PID dual um, which has a weapon light and not only has a green laser but also has an infrared laser uh, and in the lumens candela ratings on those is uh, 800 in high mode 800 lumens in high mode with 17,000 candela and 400 lumens in low mode with 8.5 thousand candela and the MSRP jumps up quite a bit to $282. A lot of that I'm sure centers around the uh, IR laser. Outside of light performance, I know a lot of people who choose a weapon light, um, besides the performance alone, a lot of guys, you know, they don't like uh, aesthetics, plays a big look or plays a big part into um, the weapon light that they choose. And like I mentioned before, the, um, the PID is more like a mid-size light. Uh, the TLR7, um, and I'm going to show some pictures here of this light mounted on, um, well, all of the lights mounted on one gun, and that's going to be my G19 Gen 5, so you kind of get an overall overall uh, uh, view and, 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 and figure of what it's going to look like with the different lights mounted on the gun in comparison really more to the... Um, PID. So I know a lot of people don't care for an X300 U size light where so much the bezel sticks out way further than the muzzle, muzzle and choose to go the TLR7 route, which really sticks out and sits just about flush with the end of the slide or the muzzle. Um, so let me go ahead and, and show a couple pictures here. So like I mentioned, I'm going to use the same gun for all of the different lights so you can get a side-by-side -side comparison. As I mentioned, I'm going to use my G19 Gen 5. Uh, there's no magazine in the gun. Chamber is empty. I do quick, quickly also want to mention the attachment uh, method on the gun. Um, this is a screw. You see, it's a spring-loaded uh, rail grabber as we ha have here. As you see here, uh, mounts on the gun. Um, there's a spring, a couple springs that hold put tension on it. And once you get it locked into the rail slot on your gun, you're going to use the included tool that comes with the light in order to tighten that down. So here's the Holosun PID uh, mounted on the G19. Um, as you see, you know, it does not sit flush on the end like a TLR7 would, uh, but does not stick out quite as far as a um, Surefire X300 or Mod Light PL350 would. Um, looks decent, uh, not quite, in, in, to me, the aesthetics aren't quite as good as some of the other weapon lights. I can't really put my finger on it. Um, I'm not a super big fan of how the, the light looks. Um, but like I mentioned, I was looking for a different light. And the uh, PID, which, um, you know, I mentioned the MSRP is 135, but you can find them on the, on the market. Street value is really around about 115. So, uh, show next, uh, next weapon here is the Surefire X300 Turbo. Um, the X300 use the exact same size, uh, but like you see, um, in comparison to the PID, it does stick out past the muzzle quite a bit more, which I know some people are definitely not a fan of. Next light, next up is the Streamlight TLR1 HL. Um, longer than the PID, but not quite as long as the Surefire X300 U series. Here we have the Mod Light PL350 with the PLHV2 head. Uh, definitely the largest light out of all of them. And definitely does stick out past the muzzle quite a bit. And then lastly, here is the Olight PL2 Balder Red. Only reason I still have this thing is because I can't even really sell it. But it's figure I throw it in the video in comparison to handgun weapon lights. 
Um, I know there are different um, PL2 offerings out there, ones that don't have the laser on them. I used to have some years ago also. I don't remember if the uh, Boulder Red is the, the main body is the same size as the, uh, the PL2 Valkyrie um, or not. I am going to show some beam comparisons also from uh, both inside structure, inside a house, or uh, also outside so you can see <clears throat> the throw and how well it works through, um, cuts through the darkness in, in, in a really dark area like outside. So <clears throat> before, before I uh, segue into the footage with the beam comparisons, um, you know, a couple things that I want to discuss, things that I noticed. Um, just messing around with it outside of the box uh, You know, I already talked about the paddle switches versus the toggles But one thing I did notice is the light <clears throat> and the operation How you go from constant on to uh, momentary on Is you just press the button If you pr quickly release it, it goes into constant on And if you press and hold it It'll be momentary also only couple of cons that I have noticed is that first and foremost, there is a slight delay. I mean, very, very slight delay from when you're in momentary mode and you release the light. There's a very, very slight delay before the light actually turns off itself. I don't know if it's because of where the contact points are under the switch or what it may be. It's probably not even really that big of a deal, but I did notice it, um, especially in comparison to the other lights that I've had for uh, quite a while uh, Another issue that I noticed and, and you may have seen it when I first started this is that Sometimes Switch doesn't work you have to be pretty pretty deliberate with it, which you know, I mean If you're using weapon light You probably will be you're not gonna pussyfoot it and the other thing that you may have just have noticed because it did it a couple times is that sometimes every once in a while when you're trying to use momentary only it goes into constant on mode even though you kept your finger applied to the paddle switch once you release it and it should turn off it does not it stays in constant on mode so um i i would say that that's one of the cons that go against the hollis pid also um along with you know i mean the aesthetics aren't really that great on it it, it does look in my opinion, it looks kind of a little bit cheesy, um, especially in comparison to something like Mod Light or the Surefire. Um, I think they're really great looking lights. And then even the Streamlight TLR1 HL. So like I mentioned, I'm going to save the footage um, for beam comparison uh, for the end of the video. So just closing it out, summary and thoughts. Uh, Hollow Sun PID standard model. Retail price of one, or I'm sorry, MSRP of 135, but mostly can be found for about 115 dollars. Uh, most online retailers, um, 1,000 lumens coming out the front at 23,000 uh, candela. Also has an available mode for a, a low function, and I do remember uh, just realized that I did not talk about how that changes. So when you want to go for high mode versus low mode, um, you see it, it's got dual paddles on each side. You hold them. Press both and hold them, and then it'll automatically dim down. And then once you do that, it'll stay in low mode until you press both paddles and hold it open again, or hold them on, and then it'll go back into high mode. And you may have just noticed, and that's the first time that I noticed it, that it seems to jump out of mode that you're trying to keep it in. Now it won't do it since I mentioned it. But when I release it to go into the higher mode or the lower mode, depending on which one I was on, uh, it jumped back into the previous one uh, that I was mentioning or trying to reach. So um, takes a one eight three fifty battery. Um, you know, a lot of people really like one eight three fifties because they are rechargeable. Uh, I will say the downside of one eight three fifty batteries is they do not last anywhere near as long as uh cr 123 a's and that is even with uh super high candela uh, pistol lights such as this, uh surefire x 300 t um they don't give a rating uh as far as a time limit for the high mode but they do say on the low mode it'll last up to i think it's an hour maybe an hour and a half 
uh, that's not really a super long time. And I can tell you, like, the Mod Light PL350, which is the only other weapon light that I have that takes a 18350, the runtime is only 35 to 45 minutes. It's much lower in comparison to uh, weapon lights like the TLR1HL and, and X300, both models, uh, which will go for about 90 minutes um, on two CR123As. So the that, you know, what how, what's acceptable to you uh, you know, depends on your 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 needs. Uh, comes with a one eight three hundred and fifty battery that is fourteen hundred mAh. Uh, also comes with a USB magnetic charging cable. So plug it into any type of box that may come with your standard cell phone, your USB. Uh, uh, stick it on the bottom here, and it will charge it up. But like I mentioned, I will probably more likely use it for um, just taking the battery out of the front, unscrewing the bezel and um, putting a fresh battery in there. So, you know, question is, is this white light worth it? Um, well, really, you know, I mean, that's depend, that depends on what, what you'd like. Um, I know a lot of people are really uh, big Hollow Sun fanboys out there and, and maybe want to jump all over this because they're really into Hollow Sun sights. Uh, but, you know, the 1000 Lumen 23000 Candela, that is, uh, that, that is impressive, you know. Um, with with like I mentioned the X300U having a thousand lumens but only having eleven point three thousand candela is pretty low, whereas the Streamlight TLR1HL has a thousand lumens but twenty thousand candela. So very close uh, numbers claim numbers between uh, the TLR1HL and the uh, Holosun PID. Um, but you know you start getting into the big boys like the Surefire X300T. Well, that only has 650 lumens. It has 66,000 candela. Um, and, you know, some people may scoff at the 650 lumens, but it, it's still plenty bright. And when you have the candela horsepower behind it, it super intensifies that light. Uh, Mod Light 350, um, PL350, they have claimed lumens of 1350. Uh, but I want to say that works holsters kind of proved that it really was not putting out 1350. Um, I don't know what that may be, but the candela is 54,000. So again, very impressive. Not as much as the new 300T, uh, but way, way, way more than the Streamlight TLR1HL and the Holosun PID. And then lastly, the Olight Boulder Red, you know, they claim, uh, 1,120 lumens and 14,400 candela. So what I recommend... Uh, this light or would I buy this light again? Um, well, you know right now and I have not had a chance to take it outside yet Or even kind of LARP around the house to see the uh, how the beam plays indoors with the usable flood and whatnot You know $115 street price for this light where you can get a Streamlight TLR1 HL for about $20 more Just because of the simple reasons that the aesthetics are not that great um, along with the issues that I saw with the switches that I discussed, uh, if I had to do it all over again, I would probably go with a Streamlight TLR1 HL, um, you know, very close in cost. Whereas the Streamlight is, uh, it's, it's, it's been around for a long time and it is a very, uh, proven light. So that'll wrap up the, uh, talking part of this video. Uh, hope, hope that it helps somebody out. Uh, and I, at least do, doing Google searches, I did not see a ton of videos out there on the Hollow Sun PID. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the next videos I'll probably do maybe a little bit more in depth when it comes to a comparison between them, spend a little bit more time on it. But if this video here, uh, was able to help you out, um, in choosing a weapon light, do you want the Hollow Sun? Do you not want the Hollow Sun? Um, you know, again, that's what the channel is here for. Uh, definitely appreciate the likes and subscribe, uh, subscriptions and the views and the feedback that I've been getting from everybody. Um, we're getting closer and closer to 500 followers and, and, and I've said in other videos, I know that's nothing compared to many other YouTubers out there, but you know, this is just a fun little project. Uh, for me to work on, on the side. So uh, beam comparisons indoors and outdoors between the lights uh, will follow this. Um, thank you very much. Have a good day.